Hello and welcome to another edition of Econa Day Unplugged. It's Thursday, the 16th of June, 2022. Terry Sheehan's on the US East Coast and I'm Jeremy Hawkins in London. Central banks have been especially busy in recent days trying to convince investors that inflation is not getting out of control. So here's Econa Day's take on what they did and why they did it and what it all means for financial markets and the global economy. So, Terry, I guess we must start off with the Fed. Um, over the last couple of months, many in the markets have been suggesting that when it comes to monetary tightening, 50 basis points is the new 25. But after yesterday's Fed move, should that be 75? I don't think so. I think uh, Chair Powell indicated that it was an unusual move, which it was. We haven't seen an a 75 basis point increase since 1994 uh, at another episode of inflation. Um, and he did indicate that the July meeting could well see a 75 basis point increase when they meet then. But he also said that it could be a 50 basis point. So I think what the Fed was trying to accomplish was to make sure the message was out there that the Fed is indeed paying attention to inflation and working with its tools to get inflation down again as best it can. OK, I mean, not long ago, and indeed it wasn't very long ago, it seemed that from what the Fed was saying, it was going to be 50 basis points and it was almost nailed on as far as the financial markets were concerned. Why do you think it suddenly became 75 rather than 50? I mean, was there any particular numbers, you think, which really forced the Fed's hand? No, I think it was kind of a confluence of numbers. I mean, last Friday we had a higher than expected CPI report that was followed by a producer price index report that was very similar. Um, definitely the food and energy components were above expectations. And these are the kind of things that really affect consumers badly and also businesses who have to charge more for their goods and services. So um, we also had increased inflation expectations in the University of Michigan uh, survey of consumers. Uh, just there were enough things to show that, you know, there was a chance that inflation expectations could start to become unanchored. The Fed did not want that. And that inflation was persisting somewhat higher than they had originally anticipated. So a 75 basis point move seemed warranted to them, and I would have to agree. Fair enough. OK, well, say so 75 basis points now, presumably more to come. So, well, some people already said that the Fed has lost the plot, but what does the new dot plot tell us about where policy might be headed as we go into, well, the end of this year and this next year? Well, I think they're looking for um, the Fed funds rate to be a little more restrictive by the end of the year. That was kind of a surprise. Um, and that it's going to be slightly more restrictive still into 2023. And maybe a few rate decreases in 2024. Uh, but it just really suggests that on the whole, the FOMC is lining up behind getting the Fed funds rate somewhere back to neutral, whatever neutral is, around 2.5 percent. OK, um, I guess the key question for a lot of investors then is going to be, we've had this Fed tightening, more to come. Um, I assume that the Fed is essentially is still trying to call a soft landing. But you know, how much do you think the risk of recession has increased now? And we had what, you know, this just last few days, we've had weak and expected retail sales in May. A few minutes ago, we had a disappointing number on housing starts as well. So is the, the a risk of recession now, what, 50 percent, more than 50 percent or less than 50 percent? Uh, easy question. <laughs> no, it isn't an easy question because, frankly, what I saw in the housing starts data was that uh, levels, although it was a disappointment compared to market expectations, these sorts of levels are consistent with modest to moderate expansion. So mm -hmm. um, provided the levels don't continue to decline, Housing may just be settling back into something that's more normal, which would be OK. Uh, but consumer spending is definitely looking like a concern right now to me. 
Um, and even if we don't go into outright recession, I think we're in for several quarters of very sluggish growth. OK, fair enough. Um, let me also ask you, just from the policy perspective, was there any word on active quantitative tightening as opposed to you know, the, the passive stance that the, the Fed's got, got at the moment? Not a peep. Um, mm. They, they, um, he was, Powell was asked a little bit about QT, but it was more in terms of how the Fed conveys information. Um, I, I think the Fed would like to just let the balance sheet decline along the lines they've stated. Um, selling is something the Fed does not like to do. Of when it's adjusting its balance sheet. Okay, fair enough. Anything else from uh, your side on the Fed? I, well, what was interesting to me is in the vote that Esther George, the president of Kansas City Fed, dissented in the vote. Mm -hmm. She wanted a 50 basis point increase. Um, that suggests to me that the decision was not necessarily as clear cut as the 75 basis points might indicate. So I'm very much looking forward to the release of the minutes in three right. weeks. Mm, watch this space then. Excellent. OK, thanks a lot for that, Terry. And let's move uh, across to Europe then. Um, last week, the ECB made its policy announcement. And in a nutshell, what do they do? Well, quantitative easing will end on the 1st of July. That didn't surprise anyone, which opens a door to a rate hike. Now, there's no change in interest rates last week. But crucially, they have pre-announced now that um, interest rates will be going up by 25 basis points in July. Uh, that will be on the 21st of July, the meeting taking place then. And that would lift the uh, deposit rate to minus 0.25%. That will be followed by at least another 25 basis points when we get into September. So taking deposit rate at least to flat, so out of negative territory. Now, key to the second move, how big it's going to be, looks like it's going to be the inflation forecast. Now, the latest numbers that the ECB came out with put the uh, the rate of headline inflation rate at 2.1 percent at the end of 2024, the end of the forecast period. Hence, you know, if you like, justifying a tightening because it's still above target. So if we don't see any kind of improvement in September from what President Lagarde was intimating, it looks as if, well, 25 basis points is at least is certainly going to happen, it seems. Um, but it could well be 50 basis points unless we see a better inflation outlook. So that will certainly be something to keep an eye on and is going to make the upcoming HICP data all the more important. Thereafter, uh, there's talking about interest rates rising gradually, but only vaguely. And so they've left themselves enough wiggle room there really to do whatever they want. Um, interestingly, there was no specific measures about market fragmentation. So the widening of spreads we've seen recently in the Eurozone bond markets between the more peripheral markets and, uh, and the more solid markets such as the German bonds. Um, and indeed, the markets didn't take that too well. And it actually forced the ECB to hold an unscheduled meeting yesterday specifically to address that particular is issue. At that meeting, they came out and said that they would be adjusting their reinvestment of maturing pandemic emergency purchase program assets, so the old PEP, uh, towards the more vulnerable markets as and when they need to do it. They also confirmed suspicions that they're working on a new anti-fragmentation tool. But I guess, frankly, it's a bit of a pity, given what's happening and how long they've been planning this, that they didn't actually think of this right rather sooner. Um, European bond markets are certainly likely to be in for a rocky time if we continue to see US yields resume their upward trend over the coming weeks and months. Also, there's no mention in the official communique um, on the FX market. So bottom line for the euro then is it's likely to remain under pressure, I suspect, as US interest rates continue to rise faster, indeed probably a good deal faster than we see coming out of the eurozone. So still in that context, a strong dollar environment. Out of the Bank of England today, um, well, five out of five as far as the BV is concerned. Bank rate went up another 25 basis points. That puts it at 1.25 percent. No surprises there. That was pretty well priced into the market, although there was some speculation that we could see a larger 50 basis point move. And to that end, the vote was again split. In fact, it exactly matched what we saw in May, uh, a 6-3 vote in favour of the 25 basis point increase. Uh, but the three who voted in favour of 50 last time also voted in 
in favour of 50 basis points this time. And that's certainly going to help to sustain speculation that we will get another move at the next meeting in August. There won't be a bank meeting in July. Inflation now on, on the bank's basis is seen peaking at just over 11 percent in October. So that's a full percentage point higher than they were talking about at the last meeting. But and this is a, a big but really second quarter GDP now they're expecting to come in at minus 0.3 percent. So it really is a case that you know, the policy dilemma facing the Bank of England at this time is, I suspect, you know, significantly more acute than the likes of the Fed or the Bank of Canada or in the Swiss National Bank, where at least the real domestic economies appear to be holding up a good deal better. As far as the UK is concerned, there's increasing speculation that by the end of the third quarter, we'd actually see the UK economy in recession. So it's going to be interesting to see how the votes go um, come in as we go forward to various meetings. Um, I think most people will be anticipating another increase at the next meeting. But it's worth pointing out that um, Michael Saunders, who's been perhaps the most aggressive of the hawks on the MPC, he won't be attending that meeting. His term is going to expire before then. So one of the main hawks will not actually be voting then. So that may perhaps increase the likelihood of, of at least 25 basis points rather than the 50 basis points. But clearly, that's going to be largely determined by what happens on the inflation front. As far as the pound's concerned, the pound's had a few wobbles of late um, because of what's going on with the real economy. And indeed, I suspect today's move won't offer sterling much help. Firstly, lump, the hikes that we mentioned, they're really only small versus the likes of the Fed and the Bank of Canada, now possibly even the ECB. And even modest rate hikes will be seen as increasing uh, the risk of recession. So to be honest, the pound at this stage looks pretty vulnerable. Um, before the Bank of England announcement, we did have a surprise coming out of the Swiss National Bank. Now, they've been widely expected to increase interest rates at some point, but not until after the ECB had raised its rates for fear of boosting the already strong Swiss franc. So the 50 basis point hike we had out of the SNB this morning, that puts their policy rate at minus 0.25%, certainly came as something of a surprise. And I guess with a couple of sort of takeaways from this, one is that they genuinely concerned about inflation. And two, and in many ways more significantly, it seems that they're no longer worried about the strength of the franc. In fact, the previous references in uh, earlier statements or communiques to the currency being highly valued, that was removed from the policy communique altogether. And the only comment on the, uh, the FX developments was limited to the bank just saying it was willing to be active in a foreign exchange market as necessary. Um, so there's not really much to go on there. And I I guess if you pull it all together, it kind of smacks of regime change, whereby the franc, or at least the euro franc cross rate, is no longer the key determinant of interest rates. So investors then are likely to see today's actions from the SMB as a green light to push the Swiss unit still higher. And it's certainly going to be interesting to see what the SMB is going to do should parity versus the euro be tested. So that's very much a case of see, keep an eye on that one because the policy outlook now there is much more complicated or uncertain than it had been previously. Tomorrow, we'll get a Bank of Japan meeting. And if you're looking to the exception to the rule, then BOJ is as good a place as anywhere at the moment. Um, they're very much expected to announce on Friday uh, no change in their policy targets. So leaving both the minus 0.1% short term rate and the 0.25% cap on the 10 year government bond yield rate unchanged. And they really do mean it, it seems. Um, only this week, they said that they'd be making changes to both their auction share schedule and the amount of outright JGB purchases they'll be making as and when needed to achieve these targets. Um, so it really does seem, despite what's happening pretty well around the world at the moment, BOJ rates are going to be on hold. So we will continue to see uh, probably significant widening in rate and yield differentials moving against the yen. And you've got to think that's going to add to the current downside pressure on the currency. Uh, dollar yen has already seen um, what a 24 year high um, earlier on this week. And there doesn't seem to be much to actually stop it continue to make progress unless we're going to see intervention in the FX markets. Um, I don't think that's really being talked too much about at the moment. But if we do see this yen continuing to fall, the BOJ may ultimately be left with little choice. It's certainly not happy with the volatility we have in the FX markets at the moment.
But just quickly round off um, with um, a look at just uh, mention some of the other central bank moves which have happened over the last few days. Last week, the Reserve Bank of England, um, <laughs> Reserve Bank of England, Reserve Bank of Australia, um, they increased their interest rates by a larger than expected 50 basis point. Their official cash rate there now stands at 0.85 percent. Also last week, Reserve Bank of India, they increased their repo rate also by a larger than expected 50 basis points. That now stands at 4.9 percent. And in Taiwan earlier on today, they introduced a 12.5 basis point increase, which puts their benchmark rate at 1.5 percent. So in most of those cases, the moves were more aggressive than anticipated. And that kind of appears to be you know, sort of a general story doing the rounds at the moment. Wherever you're looking, partly outside of Japan anyway, and certainly China, China too. It really does still seem to be the case that rates are going up and that um, yeah, central banks clearly trying to play catch up with high and accelerating inflation. OK, that's probably about it. Unless, Terry, do you have anything else to add? No, nope, nothing for me. Excellent. OK, so let's wrap it up there then. Details, of course, of all today's central bank moves can be found in Econoday's global economic calendar, along with all the key economic data and other market moving events, too. So do take a look. And with that, on behalf of Terry and myself, thanks as ever for listening. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.